It's easy enough to find films that dramatize the battles of war, the soldiers, the military training, but a side I feel is less often explored is how civilian life is affected by war that comes too close to home. In this corner of the world follows a young woman, Suzu, as she grows up in Japan right in the midst of World War II. At the age of 18, she is married off to a suitor she hardly knows and lives out her adult life with a new family in an unfamiliar village. Despite living a comfortable and happy life, even managing to fall in love with her new husband, her innocence is slowly drained as the air raids take a toll on her sanity and her kind-hearted nature eventually gives way to depression. It's a sad story to follow because Suzu's life is carefree when she's young, but little by little, the movie gets quieter and more ominous as she grows older. Huh? Never seen that before. The visual design is great. The art style is simplistic, but definitely expressive enough, and despite being an anime, it manages to have a look of its own. Suzu likes to draw and paint, and that aspect about her is used creatively to help evoke a certain mood or give insight into a character's thoughts. I had some paint. No, what on earth am I thinking? This could have been a really dumb gimmick, but it doesn't come off that way. It's used subtly and enhances the film without taking it over. There's a major emphasis on simplistic lifestyles in this movie. With the setting being around the 1930s and 40s, it takes place during a transitionary period before televisions were widespread in Japan but battleships were commonplace. Most of the characters hold low-key jobs, participate in community service, and, of course, continue to uphold strict traditions. On your wedding night, he'll ask, Did you bring an umbrella? Huh? You'll answer, I've brought a brand new one. Then he will ask, Can I open it? And you must answer with yes. But why? Because you must. I guess I'm becoming an adult. The contrast from Suzu's light and bubbly personality to her darker, more depressed tone exemplifies the mood of the film. While this is, obviously, an anti-war movie, it's not at all in your face about it. Yes, there's mentions about the dangers of nuclear war, you really can't have a World War II movie take place in Japan and not mention nukes, for obvious reasons. But the movie isn't over the top about it. The characters don't walk through a horribly charred wasteland surrounded by corpses, and you don't see bodies disintegrate as the explosion goes off. It remains more down-to-earth. That same approach also makes the movie pretty boring in strange ways. There are a couple of scenes that I thought were meant to foreshadow something bigger. I unfortunately have a bad leg, so I'm counting on you, Suzu. Right. But nope. It's just people being people. Hand me your ration coupon and wallet. Are you sure? Thank you. I expected some kind of internal family drama, but it never happens. It's so weird, but that's part of the point of the movie and why I enjoyed it so much. It's less of a soap opera and more of a historical recreation. Or at the very least, that's how it comes off to me. These are fictional characters, but I can see them being real people due to how they deal with the problems in their lives. There are a couple of flaws that really brings down my appreciation for this movie. The major one being the pacing. It's all over the place. Most of the scenes have plenty of room to breathe, but others speed along at breakneck with no warning. Sold out? Wait, that's why you came back? I feel so bad for the Hojo family. <sighs> uh, 
I'm home. It's so nuts. It's like the film tried its best to cram as much as it could from the original manga. But while comics allow the reader to go at their own pace and absorb as much as they like from each individual panel, a different consensus has to be used for film. Or else important elements, like dialogue or scene transitions, just end up running together and it comes off poorly. Excuse me. Yes? I'm afraid we're a little bit lost. Could you tell us where the train station is at? It's this way. Thank you. Well, there was a nice sailor who showed us the way, but... Uh... Oh, him. Yes, well, he's a little strange, so... They said that a strange woman in the woods had shown them the way to the station. <laughs> there are also two separate scenes that stand out due to their strange juxtaposition from the rest of the movie. In one scene, time randomly freeze frames for seemingly no reason. I'm so sorry. And in another, one of the characters suddenly talks in fast forward. You embarrass you suck who dress like that. Don't you have anything else to wear today? They're so weird and they completely took me out of the moment. Maybe that directorial style is a Japanese cultural thing which gets lost in translation. But I don't know, it didn't come off well to me. And speaking of which, of course you get the goofy anime cliché where a character laughs in embarrassment while scratching his head. I can tolerate that just fine, but it does feel out of place for this movie. I get that it's a staple of Japanese humor, but there's moments where the comedy is done really well. Defense attire! Put out fires! No. Remove sliding doors! Survival kits! Ah! And then moments where it's just another anime. Which is so weird for a movie that's trying to be taken seriously. But again, I can give it a pass for mostly being a cultural thing. Finally, there's one moment that I just have to bring up. No spoilers, don't worry about that. It's just that there's one scene right before the end of the movie that is incredibly disturbing. It's not the goriest or most disgusting thing I've seen, but it comes out of nowhere. It is so odd to just throw that in there and you wouldn't lose a whole lot by ending the movie four minutes earlier, especially since the plot had already wrapped itself up in a satisfactory way by then. Again, it comes off like they were trying so hard to fit the entire manga in a two-hour film, and that last scene feels so out of place because of that. Despite my grievances, it was not enough to detract from my enjoyment of the movie. It's a pretty relaxing experience for the most part, with some legitimately emotional moments. There are a few bumps in the road, mostly with the pacing, but nothing that actually ruins the film. That being said, it is hard to recommend for general audiences. It moves so slowly and pretty much nothing happens for extended lengths of time. But what it does do well is set up an effective period piece that's easy to get lost in, along with charming characters that successfully drive the story. If you're interested in the setting and you don't mind a slower movie, then I say go for it. It does a great job at what it sets out to do. Thank you for watching my review of In This Corner of the World. If you'd like to be updated on my future videos, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel or follow me on Twitter.